This is a flaming pteranodon. This is a ghost manticore. And this is a tech giga wearing a top hat. In this video, I have 100 days to beat this arc mod, Anunnaki Genesis Reborn. Our goal is to be able to gain enough power to defeat the almighty world boss by day 100. Before we begin, I'd like to announce that I'm now streaming over on Twitch. So make sure to come follow me there. Links are all below in the description. And now, let's go here we are day one starting this epic modded adventure we start like we always do we hit a tree with our manly fist smack a rock with this pick i had made and watch this bracky get murdered by a, gi a giga wait wait what uh, okay let's start this one again so we punch this tree i miss and then i punch a track instead rip okay third time lucky um what is that oh shit it's aggressive run 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 phew I think I got away. Ah! Okay, attempt number four. We got this. I need to tame this trike, and since this is modded arc, we can passive tame it without the risk of being murdered in one hit. 40 berries or so later, we had tamed this trike, and we named him Cruz. But now, I needed hide in order to make a saddle. But all the dinos here are really hard to kill. But since every dino in this mod is a super high level, I can't fight them alone. So I just sent Cruz in to do this fight for me. So I sent Cruz in to fight this turtle. With the turtle now dead, I can now harvest this remains to make a saddle for our trike. And finally, this start is starting to really look up. Day two, we need a starter base. So I placed down these four foundations and then went out to gather some materials so I could craft and place this forge and this simple bed. Now the bed doesn't look that comfortable, but I bet it's a lot better than the alternative. On to our next task. I want to tame a pteranodon, but first I need to kill these ants for their chitin in order to make a saddle. Then I found this lonely PT, threw a bowler at him so he couldn't run away, then shot him a couple times in the face. Tamed him and named our second best friend, Elliot. Now that we're starting to make some really good progress, I can now stand here at my building and do basically nothing. I suppose I should probably put some clothes on though. Now we can fly on top of this cliff and mine some metal. Ooh, exciting. Day three, now that we can fly, I spent the whole day exploring to see what dangers we might face later on. For example, this collection of creatures we must avoid. I located some cool spaces for possible base locations like this ancient ruins, but I really couldn't make my mind up. So we'll decide on something a little bit later. The next day, I still hadn't decided on a base location but I did run into Atlas while he was riding around his flame shadow main. I have other players that play on this server that play along with me. For all my 100 days, they start out with just Patreons entering the server, and then I open the server up to public later. If you'd like to be a part of that, join my Discord with the link below. Now it's day 5 and I have settled on this area to be our main base area. So it's time for an epic base montage. Let's go. It's now day six, and while we were returning from our resource run for our base, we spotted this F-14 fighter jet. W wait, what? Yes, this fighter jet is from today's sponsor, War Thunder. I have been playing hours of War Thunder. Why, you may ask? Well, that's simple. That's because War Thunder has over 2,000 tanks, airplanes, helicopters, and warships that you can play with, making it the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made, and it's free to play. They have almost every Defense Force style vehicle from the 1920s all the way up to the current days. I personally enjoy driving around in my M1A1 tank. I'm a little bit biased. It is the Australian one. You can tell with the kangaroo sign on it. You can join me personally in any one of these game modes if you download War Thunder now on PC, Xbox Series XS, or PlayStation 5. All you need to do is click my link in the description and download War Thunder for free now. As an added bonus, when you use my link, you will receive a large in-game bonus pack with multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, boosters, and a few other goodies you'll just have to discover when you download. Thank you War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Now back to working on our base. Day 7 and our progress isn't really going too great. We really need to focus in. So I went out and I built this trap. What is it for you might ask? Well, it's for this big ass pigeon, which I plan to use as a pack horse to help us tame some farming dinos later on. We shot this bird a few times to put it into a deep sleep, but we had to wait quite a while for it to tame up. So I flew off to explore the area some more. The following day and we're still waiting for this bird to completely tame up. It's taking longer than I had hoped. So again, I went out to see what other dinos I could possibly tame. And that's when I came across this ice wyvern nest. It is still early game, but I'm confident that my PT could outrun this wyvern, uh, I think. I got to the nest and I swiftly yoinked the egg to claim it as my own. Then I sprinted off on my PT, keeping a keen eye on my behind, hoping that its parents won't delete me out of existence. After escaping from the dangers of wyverns, I returned back to this Argy, just as it was ready to become our friend for life. 
even though knowing me and my previous experience in these games, it might be a short life. Once tamed, we named our feathery friend Belinda, because she kind of reminds me of my ex, thick and dark. We then take Belinda out and immediately put her to work. We notice the shock doed seems to be getting bullied by a flock of wyverns, and we don't tolerate bullies now, do we? I rescued this doed and took him back to my home and dropped him in my base. See, I knew not making a roof was a good idea. Day 9, we took a leisurely stroll on our trike to gather some fairies for narcotics and other berry-related things. Then we went to the pits of hell to gather obsidian, metal, and crystal for war-related things. I knew farming all of this by hand was going to be a pain, so we started this long, tedious, passive tame process on this shock doed. The day was already coming to an end when I found this elite dragonfly. It was just hovering around on the cliff, and apparently some elite dinos can passively drop items when left on wander. So I raised my hand out with some kibble, and it took the bait. I forced it to be my friend. We now have a tamed glowing dragonfly. And it turns out you can ride them. It, it really wasn't that exciting, if I'm honest. Day 10, I figured it's probably a good time to put a roof on our base. Oh yeah, and we finally tamed this doed after honestly what felt like forever. And here is stage one of our base completed. Wait till you see what I add later on. I call this the sus rocket ship. It's now day 11 and we finally placed the fabricator down. Then we went to the volcano area to gather silica pearls from these volcano style lakes. It's not amazing content, but it is vital to our survival. I had received the message that Atlas had lost one of his dinos while he was running around the volcano area. So I went over to try and help him. He seemed to have some pretty pissed off dinos chasing after him, so I tried to pick him, but for some reason it just wouldn't work. Disclaimer, I, I did have flyer pickup on, so I don't really know why this didn't work. Hashtag arc problems. I tried distracting the nameless around Atlas by attacking them, but then this damn reaper appeared. And uh, sorry Atlas, I'm out. May Atlas rest in peace. Hey, uh, do you remember that ice wyvern egg that we found on day 8? Yeah, so I kind of forgot about it until now. Yeah, I do kind of realize it is five days damn later. But uh, look, this mod has a lot to offer and I get easily distracted. Y you know, getting caught up with like War Thunder and stuff. Sorry guys. While we waited for this ice wave in the hatch, we went out to explore and gather some much needed cementing paste from this beaver dam. Once we finished exploring this amazing map, we returned to see that our wyvern had now hatched and he was ready to claim. We then claimed this beautiful beast and named it Atlas after one of my awesome Patreons. Day 14, we spent this morning imprinting this baby wyvern like the whole damn morning. I was kind of concerned that this wyvern was going to die early like most of my dinos in my 100 days. So I went out to find another egg just in case. Day 15 and our little baby wyvern has all grown up. So we took him out to feed on the local fauna so we could get some easy levels and make him big and strong. We then cautiously went around the volcano island knowing very well that this wyvern could definitely not take any of these creatures. But we got stupid super lucky and stumbled across this giga egg. So in AG Reborn, you cannot tame certain creatures like normal. In order to befriend one of these, you have to kill one mainly a female, and hope that it will lay an egg just before it dies. Since the volcano is a pretty brutal area with wild dinos killing each other, I would say this was the best bet to progress in this 100 days. Day 16, we had placed our newly acquired Giga Egg in the soul terminal that we had just made. This will allow it to incubate all the way down to about 1%. And then Atlas, our wyvern, not the person that plays with us, asked to go on a murder spree. So we did. The following day, our Giga Egg was ready to be hatched and welcomed into this world. Once hatched, we named this brown baby Joe, after my old boss that had a rather big jaw like this Giga. On a local island close to our base, we found this Alpha Trike. Now, Alpha variant creatures are much more powerful than their vanilla counterpart. They can only be passive tamed and are generally aggressive, so taming this might be a little bit diff uh, No, yeah, 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 it was, it was actually quite easy. This lovely gentleman we named Albert. Not sure why, but he kind of looks like an Albert, and Albert is rather good at collecting berries, as you can see. Day 18, we added the Castles and Keeps mod, so I placed down this workbench, and then I added the forge that comes with it. Uh, it's basically just an industrial forge, but a little smaller. Day 19, and our Giga named Joe is fully grown, 
so it's time to take him out to gain some levels. I took him into the water because I figured there might be a lot of fishes that he can munch on. I found this Basilosaurus along the way, which I thought might be a good add to our team. So we spent the rest of the day trying to tame this long whale-like creature. Now it's already day 20 and I feel like our progress isn't going so well, but I know taking down some of these powerful dinos can give you some really good loot. I flew over to the volcano island and brought out our Giga Joe. I was feeling rather confident. After all, the Giga should be the apex creatures of Ark, right? I saw this pack of Dodo Rexies and went in for the kill when this happened. So yeah, I died, but Joe was still alive. So I raced back over as quick as I could, but I was too late. Joe was taken from me way too soon. With Joe gone, I was pushed back in progression, but I had heard that Atlas was on the volcano island farming loot with his Alpha Rex. This was my chance to see if I could pick up some, you know, leftovers from his kills maybe? Not my proudest moment, but hey, what would you do if you were me right now? Huh? And boy did it pay off. We scored another Giga Egg and this Indom Rex Egg, both very powerful creatures for this part of the game. I'm assuming they're just leftovers from when Atlas killed them. I was trying to find Atlas on the island, but when I had finally caught up to him, I kind of flew right into the crossfire of a fight he was having, and that's when we lost our Wyvern in the process. Damn, we lost two of our best dinos in one day. Day 21, and I'm gonna call this day the Game Changer Day. Why? because we stumbled across this Alpha Giganotosaurus egg. This egg will change our game drastically. With this new egg and the others, we went straight back to our base and placed them in our soul terminal and realized we had some others ready to hatch. I birthed these bad boys and set them out in our yard to grow up. Now that we're feeling good, it's now a good time to get a fresh cut. Day 22, we hatched our game-changing Alpha Giga and a Vanilla Giga as well. We set them both out with the rest of our hatchlings in the yard in order to grow up. Then we went to continue taming this Bassy from way earlier. Once we tamed this skinny whale thingy, we named her Karen because, well, Stream thought it might be a good idea. I don't know. The following day, we took our whale Karen out for a lovely dip in the big wide ocean. I have never really explored this map before and had no idea that the underwater had these really cool air bubbles. There's a whole new world underneath this ocean. We returned from the deep sea dive and one of our wood wyverns had grown up. So we took it out to gain some levels by eating some of the local wildlife. One cool fact about these wyverns is that their fire breath can also cocoon the enemy and stun them in their place for a short time. This does come in clutch during this video. Day 24, I realized some of these new dinos I wouldn't have much use for. So, um, well, you know. Wait, wait, look, there's another reason I did this. Each kill did help me level up my character, so their sacrifice will help us catch this W. Day 25, and we have made some amazing progress so far. I made myself a fresh new set of AG Reborn Flak, which gives you some nice little buffs. I'm not sure about the logo on the armor though. Disappointed! I then placed down this SS Nanny to help us raise any future babies just before I took flight to the Redwoods because our baby Alpha Giga is no longer a baby. It's time to waste these fools. Doing 99k damage, we were on top of the world. This is definitely a game changer of the team. We even took on this Ghost Dodo Rex. Wait, this thing has reduced damage resistance, but we're getting wrecked. No, 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 no! I'm gonna lose my Giga. Our health was dropping rapidly, but then Atlas had a big brain move for me. Go in the water, go in the water. It's slow. I tried oh. making it to the water, but the Dodo Rex kept slowing me down. Hey, will you look at that? <laughs> We've escaped. Phew, that was a close call. Once we were in a safe place, I teleported back to base and let my bloody Giga rest up. Sorry, old fella. I finished off the day by taming this golden Dodo which, when left on Wanda, drops golden kibble and instant health potions. We named this golden chicken Midas. Like the old story about the guy that turned things to gold? You know, the one you should know from school? If you don't, just, just Google it or, you know, pay attention in school. After all of that craziness, I had decided to name this Alpha Giga Maverick after yet another epic Patreon of mine. We then went over to the volcano island where all the big, bad, scary dinos are. You would have thought I would have learned my lesson, right? No. At least this time, I went over with a tad bit of caution. I really needed levels in my Giga and myself. I'm really limited in what I can do at such a low level right now. And our current state, and even took on a couple higher tier Dodos once Atlas came to help us out. Day 27, and I did a little bit of housekeeping. First, we added some foundations to level off this area. I had some eggs from dinos we have found in the volcano. I then placed them outside to get some fresh air 
and I placed down these cool looking chibi stands and placed all of my friends chibis on them to decorate my base a little bit. Gotta represent now that I have my own chibi along with my friends. Finally, I hatched two more babies. One of them, this flame giga, I have to say it looks hot. You know, like temperature hot because of the skin, not like romantic hot because that's kind of weird. Day 28 and now I realized I am a high enough level to craft this AG Reborn Tech Replicator. So I made it and placed it down, not realizing I either wasn't a high enough level to make anything in it or I didn't have the resources. So for now, we'll just leave it be. I also had a light bulb moment and I had a project I wanted to add to my base, but we'll get to that later because I needed a lot of resources for it. So I spent basically the rest of the day gathering resources, mainly metal. Day 29 and we're still farming, but this time I need a lot of chitin to make some cementing paste. So I jumped on my Indominus Rex and swam down to the ocean. What? I know this is not fitting to take a Rex down into the ocean, but I knew that this Rex was our best chance at farming Dunkleo since they dropped mass amounts of chitin. Now that we have a decent amount of cementing paste, I made an additional level to my base so that the following day I would complete it and place this tech replicator, an item we can actually use. Uh, maybe. I was getting kind of bored of the base stuff and wanted to go and get some more action. So I flew back over to the dangerous volcano, summoned my flame giga and rampaged all that we could to try and collect some decent loot and resources from the corpses of these overpowered lizards. Until we got a little bit too close to this reaper named Flush Dragon, the Supreme Dodo Reaper. It chased us down and well, you can basically see what happened. I was pretty sad that we lost our flame giga. So I swallowed my pride and went back to building this greenhouse. At least I can do this somewhat successfully. It's now day 33. Yes, I know you're probably wondering what happened to the last couple days. Well, basically I forgot to press record my bad not much has happened though let me catch you up well i went out to go try and find some decent tames and while i was out i was there for a while i only found this flame shadow main so i built a trap near base and put him in it now typically it's a passive tame but i wanted to knock this one out because the passive tame kind of wasn't working in this mod so i shoot him a couple times with these trank metal arrows with a compound bow knock him out and then i feed him some exceptional kibble once he was finally tamed we took him out of the box well, we, we tried a couple times. One thing I love about Shadow Means is their maneuverability. So getting him out was pretty epic. We went out to go test to see how good this Flame Shadow Main was. He wasn't really that great, but hey, it's a Flame Shadow Main and that's pretty cool in its own. It's now day 34 and we really need some decent tames in order to progress. Since we lost all of our good ones already, I don't really know what we're going to do for now. So we went out exploring, but we came out empty handed. Day 35 and I'm still having no luck taming a decent level dino. But you know what I can tame? And I'm pretty good at giant queen bees. Yeah, I, I mean, honey's good, right? Who doesn't like honey? Now that we have some queen bees, we took them straight back to base, placed them down and turned them into some beehives. Day 36 and I'm going to attempt to tame a flame dodo rexy. Yes, this one that you can see right now. I shoot it with my compound bow, make it quite angry. It comes over to us. I realize that we've only done a tiny bit of torpor and uh yeah this isn't gonna work let's move on i then head over to the grassy highland kind of area and find this poison dodo rex this time i've got a different strategy i'm gonna trap it so i set up a trap to try and kite it in then i shoot it a couple times but it's not reacting to my shots which could be a good thing maybe i decide to get a little bit closer to be able to kite it in eventually i get it to come over to our trap but it just runs around it for a little bit until we get it in there and then I lock it in. This is when I realized that Dodo Rexies can destroy stone structures. Rip. I keep trying to trank it out. Just, you know, maybe it might work. And then it runs over, knocks me out. But thanks to the AG Reborn armor I'm wearing, I get up rather quickly and I'm not dead. So I continue to try and trank it out and then it runs back and then just kills me out of nowhere in one hit. This stuff confuses me sometimes. Day 37 and it's round two in attempting to tame this poison Dodo Rexy. This time I came a little bit more prepared with metal gate frames. So once again, we set up the trap kited him in rather easily this time locked him in and then just started tranking him out now poison dodo rexy will be super useful why you might ask well poison dinos deal torpor damage which means a powerful dino like this will be able to knock out more powerful dinos for us to be able to tame it took quite a few arrows to be able to knock it out but when we finally did it was a win for us i thought to myself i'm gonna go back to base and see if we can get a golden kibble from midas once we got back to base, I checked Midas and realized he was empty. Stupid golden chicken. But fortunately for us, we had some exceptional kibble on us and that works just as good. So now we have a poison Dodo Rexy. The next best thing we could possibly get would be the flame Dodo Rexy. And you remember that one from before. We went back to the volcano island and our poison Dodo Rexy was doing mad torpor. We knocked out this flame Dodo Rexy with ease and forced it to be our friend forever. Well, until it dies, which will probably happen soon. We named this big ass fire chicken 
Blaze. We took Blaze to go and take on all the foes that it possibly could. We ran into this Prime Flame Indominus Rex and started munching away at it. Everything was going so good, and then we died. Uh oh, that's not a good thing. It's now day 38, and we're down a Flame Dodo Rexy. Atlas now has a legendary Rex and they do some pretty powerful attacks. I want one. Of course, once the area was safe, the loot goblin came out. Yoink. I then followed Atlas to a nearby island where he was fighting an Apex Giga. I was a little concerned that this violence was getting a little bit too out of hand. So I tried to split up the fight, but the Apex Giga wasn't too happy about this and then killed my Wyvern. Lucky I had a spare Wyvern on me. So I then fly up into the smoke where I find the world boss. This is the big guy that I'm going to have to attempt to kill by day 100. I am here for other reasons though. I'm trying to get my hands on an alpha Rex egg and using Atlas to do it for me. It turns out that you can pick up Rexes with these Wyverns. So I pick up this prime alpha Rex and drop it by Atlas. Hopefully he can kill it and it'll drop an egg. Unfortunately though, it didn't drop an egg, but we did score this flame Rex egg. So I quickly rushed back to base to incubate it. While we're back at base though, Atlas was on the island still killing every alpha Rex he could see. And with that, I got two eggs back to back. Hopefully I can get a breeding pair out of them. Day 39, I placed down this SS Mutator. At least this we know will get a lot of use out of since we will hopefully be breeding a lot of Alpha Rexes, which now is definitely a game changer. If these babies can grow up to have lots of sexy time, we can basically have unlimited Alpha Rexes, which are probably one of the most powerful dinos in this mod pack. We got super lucky and we hatched twins in one of the two eggs that we got. One male and two females. Boom, baby. We now have a breeding pair. I finished this day off by placing down a tech shield to keep my highly valuable babies safe. Day 40, I started my next base upgrade and new base project by changing these center walls from stone to these castle and keeps material. These chew up a ton of materials, especially cementy paste since these walls are equal in strength to metal. So I did another resource run for chitin. Since the harvest rates on the server are so boosted, this would be the best way to get some more cementing paste. First, I flew around until I found Mr. Krabs on the beach there. Killed him, collected a ton of chitin. Then I took my flame shadow main down to the ocean to kill these overgrown goldfish or donkeys or dunkleos or whatever you want to call them. Now that we have collected all this chitin, what is the fastest way to craft cementing paste? Yes, the tech generator. <laughs> no, I, I joke, I joke. We all know it's the chem bench. There is probably something else, but let's just roll with this for now. The next day is here and we're back to working on this base upgrade piece by piece. I even added in a couple more floors for more possible options. While this was happening, our babies had all grown up and they've started making more babies. The next 60 days are going to be so much easier now, I hope. We did pick a decent stat baby and named her Julie, like our old prime minister here in Australia with red hair. After a bit of time, we had finished our center part of the base and I think it looks pretty good and has a nice tip on it don't you think? Day 42 and we now have quite a few Alpha Rex babies. I'm hoping to get some decent mutations, so I'm going to keep breeding until we do. I now wanted to see for ourselves what our new baby Rexes could do, so I took one of my originals and slaughtered our first victim, this Dodo. Yeah, now we're talking. This kind of damage, man, it's going to make all the difference. So now we can test this out on much tougher dinos like this Apex Giga. Let's see if we can finish this guy. To me, it looks like eating his butt is the right strat. We then try to take on this savage Tyrannosaurus. These fierce beasts drop some pretty decent loot. It was a pretty straightforward kill. Oh, and well, will you look at that? It's the world boss. Big orange looking. He's not really that scary looking because he's so orange. He's got big teeth though. Even though we have the Alpha Rexes, we're definitely not ready for this just yet. I want to be able to evolve this Alpha Rex into a legendary Rex. And then we probably have somewhat of a chance. Day 43, we have raised a whole red Rex army. They kind of look like gummy candies. Now that we have this army, we can try and take on some of the bosses from Anunnaki Genesis. But before we can head out, we need to make sure our Rexes are strong enough. So we quickly pump some levels into them. I name one of them Max, and this will be our main Rex. And before we can take on the first boss, we need to be able to find them. Thankfully, we can track down these dinos with this SS transmitter. Creepy stalkers would love this thing. I wonder if I could use it to find Pokemon. I, I mean, Wardens. Yes, Wardens. Yeah, w Wardens are, are some of the bosses on this server. Anyways, we set up our Rex army to take on this Warden. Being a Doed, I assume that this is going to be very hard. I send out all my Rexes into the fight, but before I can get into the fight myself, it's legit all over. 
The following couple of days, I was farming bosses as they dropped the items that I'm going to need to complete our main side quest. I want to evolve my Alpha Rex into a Legendary Rex. In order to do this though, we need a ton of resources that drop from other bosses and the variation of the Rexes found. I do find though that the artifacts are the biggest pain though. Fortunately, there are a few boss tier dinos that do drop artifacts, so we don't have to grind caves at all. Now we're on day 46. We fought this robo spider with our Rex army. This should be a piece of cake. Uh, it kind of whooped our asses. But after a couple of attempts and about 20 Rexes later, we got it down to a 1v1 situation, and I stomped this big ass arachnid out. We started day 47 with taking down a rover gorilla, but as you can see with all the red on the screen, it really messed up our Rex minions. But we did get the kill in the end and some great loot to go with it. We then set off to fight this prime alpha Rex. Being that it was just a 1v1, this did take quite a while. Just as its health was getting low, I accidentally pressed E and yeah, it killed me in one bite. I quickly returned and then finished the job. This time, thankfully, it dropped an egg. Hopefully this one has some pretty good stats or even a different color other than red. I don't mind. Day 48, we killed some more bosses and then we waited for our new Alpha Rex to hatch. Day 49, and I felt like we needed to celebrate all of our successes and our progress by adding a fresh new drip to our fit. This is the Warden Armor Set. It works kind of like a tech suit and it comes with some pretty OP buffs. Makes us run pretty fast too. Day 50 and we are out here flexing our new drip by killing some more bosses. This will be a common thing as this mod is kind of grindy at this point and I'll probably skip over some of the days, you know, not to bore you with repetitive content. Day 51, Atlas came around to show us his new celestial, this crazy looking dodo wyvern. And that's when I got this idea. I'm going to fight the world boss with all the celestials. There's like six or seven different types and they're all based on most of the vanilla bosses. That is my goal at the end of this video, which means I'm going to need a lot more artifacts and trophies to be able to get these dinos. Day 52, we went on a little bit of a side quest. Why you may ask? Well, that's because we found Evil Mouse, the Supreme Dire Wolf. And if we kill it, this wolf will drop some items that will allow us to evolve an Alpha Dire Wolf. Now, before you say, Aaron, you don't have a Dire Wolf. Well, now I have a reason to go and get one. So yeah, if I will kill this Supreme Wolf, I'll go get one. Simple. I take Evil Mouse over to this beach, drop him down, and then go and collect my rex army yes this might be overkill but hey why not use my rex army to ensure a win see that didn't last very long and we got what we came for it's the next day and i guess we need to get ourselves an alpha dire wolf well that's our aim for today i searched around until i found one in the volcano area now i'm not gonna tame it here it's way too dangerous so i took it back to my base and put it in the trap to start the taming process reminder alpha dinos in ag reborn are passive tames which i may have forgotten when i put it in the trap first so now I put on some ghillie and slowly creeped up to it to shove some kibble down its throat. This alpha wolf sniffed me out in a second and it ate me for its lunch. We tried one more time. God damn it. I'm gonna need to rethink this. Yes, it then ate me for its dinner. Day 54 and thanks to a little bit of advice from my friend Natural Causes, I kind of cheesed this tame. I just walled it in, got close to it enough for a passive feed to work and boom, tamed wish i knew about this earlier now that we have this alpha wolf successfully tamed i immediately had to evolve it this evolution animation is pretty dope if i don't say so myself and there you have it this is now our very own evil mouse the supreme wolf i took it out for a test run to see if it was any good at hunting some prey and well in comparison to our rexes it's not that good but hey it's still a dope creature to have in our collection right we then finished the day off by finding this alpha saber because yes you can evolve them into a dope creature too we tamed this little pussycat, but we didn't have the required items to evolve it just yet. We'll get back to it later. We have a bigger mission on our hand right now. I've been kind of getting distracted. Day 55, we return to fighting bosses, but some of the bosses we need to kill are hiding behind this world boss because they're pussies. But then for some reason, I flew towards the world boss and this happened. I think I've run out of flyers now. Nope, so day 56 now, and we do have an Ice Wyvern, but he's kind of weak. And since I don't want to really risk not having any flyers, I go out to tame a couple elemental PTs. We tame this Snow PT, and we name him Vanilla Ice. A little throwback to an 80s icon, but most of you watching this probably don't know who he is. Man, I'm old. Then we tame this Poison PT and name it Venom. I think it's fitting because, well, it, it's poison. I don't know. I'm, I'm just making this up on the fly as we tame these PTs. Lastly, we tame this Flame PT. We didn't name it, but Flame PTs are pretty cool. So, yeah. Day 57, 58, and 59, we raised another army of Rexes and continued slaughtering more bosses for their loot inching one step closer to completing our goals. Day 60, and I was getting kind of bored of grinding bosses, 
So I took another little break from it. I went to tame some different types of dodos. First, we tamed ourselves a second golden dodo so we could passively get more health elixirs. Then we tamed this elite Zom dodo followed by taming this elite dodo. All these dodos passively generate resources that you can only find in AG Reborn. We then finished this day off by, yes, killing another boss. This time it was a dodo wyvern, but since it was hovering over the water, I had to get its attention. So I shot it with my tech bow and it started to charge. But once it come over to greet me and my friends, an explosion went off and the dodo wyvern disappeared. Maybe it's a little shy. Once again, day 61, 62, and 63, it's a repetitiveness again. We were defeating more bosses until day 64, where we summoned in our first war chief. Now, I forgot to mention this earlier, but war chiefs will drop all the required items that we will need to be able to summon in a celestial. Once we have the summoner in hand, we fly over to this location. I get my whole Rex army out, prepare them for battle, and then summon in Peridition. Peridition. Per I can't say the name, it's weird. The Green Manticore. With the Green Manticore here, ready to fight, I send in my Rex army. As we were fighting though, I saw my entire screen go red. He is wiping out everything. And with ease, I kind of bit off more than I can chew. So with that, I just leave him there and return back to base. I'm going to have to rethink this and come back later. The next day, I return back to the Green Manticore with a fresh new army of Rexes. But the Manticore was stuck up into the sky. So I had to chase it around for a little bit and try and get it down. Using my stun ability, I finally get it down. But uh, it's too far away from my Rex army. So I wait for it to get a little bit closer, drop it again into the swamp, and then whistle my Rex army to go and attack. My whole army goes in head first but once again, it gets wiped out. We then return back to base and I have to hatch a whole brand new army to try and fight this again. We might put this on hold for a couple days because I think we're kind of close to be able to get ourselves a legendary Rex. That might change the game a little bit. Day 66, and yes, we finally have enough materials to craft this legendary Alpha Rex tribute and legendary Alpha Rex core. If you're wondering what these are used for, well, it's exactly what we need to evolve my Alpha Tyrannosaurus into the super powerful legendary Tyrannosaurus. Let us begin the transformation. We now have a legendary Rex, the most powerful creature in AG Reborn. With this, we named this bad boy Julius Maximus, who once was a great conqueror, which is what we plan to do on this server. I quickly put this tech saddle on Julius and went out to see what kind of damage we could do. Now, 100,000 damage is pretty good, but we're still unleveled. Now we have max levels, let's check it out now. Holy heck! 700,000 damage really takes us to a whole new level. Nothing can stop us now. Now we have our very own legendary Rex. I went back to hunt down the infamous green manticore. He somehow found his way to this area. I also had Atlas here for backup just in case because I really couldn't afford to lose my legendary Rex as we still have quite a ways to go before we can defeat the world boss. This time around, thanks to the epic power of this legendary Rexes, we easily destroyed the green manticore. I then found out we should tame an alpha Yudi, as they can be picked up and put on your shoulder with a special item from this mod. So I quickly went out and tamed this beauty and now it's courage roll and fear roll could come in clutch matched up with my new powerful legendary Rex. Day 68, we took Julius Maximus to fight Prome the Mega Dodo Rex. With the legendary Rex on hand, we can now fight bosses solo, especially with this OP Mega Explosion attack thingy. Once we deleted Prome from existence, he appeared again. Dude, didn't I just kill you? We then met up with Atlas to fight some war chiefs to loot them for items to summon in more Celestials. First, we summoned in Karkonos the War Chief Spider. Let's squash this spider. Oh shoot. oh shoot, it killed us as well as our Alpha Yudi that we just got. This moment, I was terrified that we are going to lose our legendary Rex, so I flew back as quickly as possible. Thankfully, Atlas was there to keep our Julius safe. And of course, we had to back it straight up and summon in the next War Chief, Nylock the War Chief Dragon. This dragon didn't last very long though. It really didn't stand a chance. Strange that the spider was more powerful than the dragon though. With these War Chiefs down, we then continued on to killing more bosses. And we continued killing more bosses through day 69 too. 
Day 70 and it's time to summon in our very own Celestial Friend. We had only a few options, but I decided to summon in Primordius the Celestial Dragon. This guy looks freaking dope. Brr, I'm so excited. I had to see what power we have just gained. I went out to fight some dinos and look at that damage. We are seriously wrecking everything we could see, sometimes over 1 million damage. But there's a catch. Their special attacks that do do the most amount of damage don't work against any of the top tier creatures, and they are kind of squishy in themselves. That's what makes the legendary Rex still a better option to survive with. Now that we have a Celestial, I don't want to keep it locked away in a Soul Ball, so I figured it's time for Phase 3 of our base, an outer castle wall to protect our Primordius and future Celestials that we will tame. This build took us a little while, all the way through to Day 71. But here it is, I think it looks pretty damn good. It's now Day 72 and our wall is complete, so yes, we're back to killing more bosses like this dragon amongst the forest. Day 73, I was focusing on trying to gather resources from certain bosses so that I could eventually evolve another legendary Rex, and then we'll have a breeding pair and not have to worry about them. When I go to check to see what else I needed, I only needed artifacts, so back to boss hunting we go. Which, we also did this again on Day 74. Day 75, and for some reason I decided not to use those artifacts on a legendary Rex, I don't know why. Instead, I summoned in our next Celestial, yes, this time our fierce foe, the Green Manticore, or whatever his real name is. We briefly took him for a spin to test his abilities, and he's basically the same as Primordius. So we returned back to base and placed him here next to our Primordius to flex our strength against any wandering foes. Day 76, and we are inching one step closer to our final goals. We know how important legendary Rexes are to our success, and I now have enough tributes to be able to evolve a second Alpha Rex. So I get one out that is the opposite sex to our current Julius, and evolve this beauty. And just like that, we have a breeding pair of legendary Rexes. I then continue to encourage both my Rexes to start some lovey lovey humpy humpy time, and when I do, I just leave them to have, you know, a little bit of private time. While waiting for some lovers to make some babies, we head out to tame some dinos that might give us a bit, little bit of a leg up. First, we tame an Alpha Mammoth. I figured it could be good as mammoths have a decent buff. Second, we tame this Alpha Yudi to replace the one that died earlier to the stupid spider. Oh, and I also tamed this unicorn. I kind of forgot where it is in the timeline of my footage when I was editing, but uh, here it is. Isn't it glorious? Day 77 killed more bosses. Basically from here on out, unless it's really important, I'm not gonna add another boss fight. Just believe we fought a crap load. Day 78, other than killing more bosses, we finally hatched our first lot of legendary Rex babies. Then we sat on the roof to wait for some more babies to be born and some of our Rexes to raise and grow up. Day 79 and it's War Chief fighting day. First we set up our Rex army so we could take this fight on. We have some spare anyway so why not. We then summon in Smog the War Chief Primate. I send my army of Alpha Rexes in to fight this beast and I can see that they've been quite successful so I just leave them to it. But for some reason once we finish fighting this guy we couldn't find his loot anywhere so that was kind of a waste of a summon and a lot of artifacts. Back at base, we hatched our next lot of legendary Rexes. This time, quite a lot more. Hopefully we get some decent mutations. Day 80, and if you haven't noticed already, I'm wearing new pants. Now let's take a moment to enjoy Evo dancing. Day 81, and we can now summon in our next Celestial. This time, we summon in Raphus the Celestial. It's a crazy dodo rex with intense moving fur. Or maybe they're feathers, I don't know. Then we summon in our second Celestial. This time, Salitha the Celestial Spider. And now that's two more Celestials down, I think I have two more remaining. Then we can prepare ourselves for the final epic battle, fighting the world boss. Day 82, and I couldn't finish this entire 100 days like this. My base just didn't feel complete. I had to change the side room walls to match our big, long, girthy rocket ship. So I put it all together, and this is what it looks like. I'm now satisfied with our entire base. We can leave that project alone. And now we've collected enough stuff to be able to summon in another war chief. We summon in Smog, the war chief primate, once again. The stupid idiot better drop the loot that we need. This time I can test out my legendary Rex's full potential. I brought a couple with us just for backup. Once we summoned him in, myself and my other legendary Rex's charged straight into fight. But for some reason, 
Smog killed me right off the back of my legendary Rex. That's strange, I didn't know they could do that. I had previously already placed a teleporter down, so we gathered all of our stuff again, teleported straight back to that same location, and then went straight back in to fight him again. And then, once again, we died. Right off the back of our dino. I'm gonna have to rethink this. Okay, third time's a charm. We gather all of our stuff, I jump back on my Rex, but this time, just like the Slave Master I am, I send in all my legendary Rexes to do my work for me. This seemed to work for us. Also, this time we got the loot that we needed. It's now day 84, and this time we summon in Ganesha, the War Chief Dodo Wyvern. This should be the last War Chief we will need to kill to be able to summon the last bit of our collection of Celestials. We stunned this bad boy so he couldn't fly off, and my Rexes started destroying this bad boy and turning it into some fried chicken. Or fried dodo wagon. Uh, yeah, whatever it is. Day 85 is here, and we summon in Zephyrus, the Celestial Dodo Wyvern. This guy's got to be one of my favorites. So much so, I spent the entire day just running around the map, destroying everything I could possibly see. The coolest thing about this is you destroy so much, it fills up the entire screen of deaths. Day 86, and we summon in our very last Celestial, Vokito, the Celestial Primate. Now, this overgrown, massive King Kong gorilla guy is pretty damn powerful. He runs around the map with ferocity, taking out everything he can see. And one of his attacks, he summons in a bunch of gorilla minions to go mess up everything that they can see too. Now we have completed our second main side quest. We have collected all the Celestials. Can we just take a minute to appreciate how cool these are? So technically, we have all we need to be able to fight the world boss, but we still have 13 days left of this 100 days, and I plan to make the most of these days. It's pretty simple what we want to do, so let me kind of summarize the next two in-game weeks. We can't go into battle without the most epic armor we could craft, and so of course, we made the War Chief armor. Secondly, I need my new signature look, so we dye our dreads red. This is how we turned out, too litty, too drippy. But then we began the part that will take up most of our time. I wanted to breed health and melee mutations into our legendary Rexes. Since we had the extra time, I also wanted some mutated colors too. I was getting kind of bored of trying to kill time. So yeah, I ran around my roof like an idiot for a couple days. After all, breeding mutations can take a long time. Wait, we almost forgot about one side quest that we set for ourselves earlier. I wanted to evolve my Alpha Sabertooth Pussycat. With all the extra time, I then went out to find Kijun, the Supreme Tiger, and murder it for its eyes. With this, we can now evolve my Alpha Saber. I'd now like to introduce you to my Supreme Tiger, we named Kevin. Isn't he cute? Day 95 and the end is near. I eagerly prepare my mammoth on my shoulder to help us with its buffs. Then I run around my base multiple times because we have nothing but time on our hands. Day 97 and our mutated baby legendary Rexes are here. We currently have four different colored Rexes that we will take to fight the world boss. It's now day 99, and all of our legendary Rexes have grown up. We did add another one, just because we got another color mutation while we're waiting. It's time to prepare to fight the world boss. But before we do, I would like to remind you about today's sponsor, War Thunder. Don't forget to use my link in the description now to be able to download the game for free. And with all the special gifts and perks that you get, why wouldn't you? Trust me, you'll thank me later. It's a lot of fun. Okay so, our, okay, so all of our legendary Rexes have full tech saddles on them. All we need to do now is make sure that all of their levels are maxed out. I basically put most of the stats in health and melee. Now that we're all prepared, I use the SS transmitter to try and figure out where exactly the world boss is. Since some of our Celestials can't actually be... Since some of our Celestials can't actually be soulboard, we have to walk them over. But that's okay, because now it's day 100. We were very close to the world boss when we started setting up all of our dinos in the places that we wanted them. With our legendary Rexes, I wanted to pay homage to my Patreons, so I named all of these five legendary Rexes after my Patreons. Let me introduce you to Sir Douche, Alex, Michael, Harry Fetus, and Atlas, my five most powerful legendary Rexes. We are now fully prepared to fight the world boss. My first aim was to just send in the Celestials and follow through with the legendary Rexes a little bit later. It is time. They're not all going. No. Wow. Now, if you notice at the top of your screen there, we've already lost two of our Celestials and the world boss hasn't lost any health. 
The Keto's dead. All the Slash deals are dead. All the Slash deals died really, really quickly. This was not good. Things are not going in our favor at all. Am I even doing any damage? But he's barely damaging me though. Why has he got super regeneration? Q attack doesn't do anything. Except to his minions. God damn it. Alright, we gotta go get the other bad boys. It's now time to send in the legendary Rexes. Now with our legendary Rexes, we were starting to do some damage. But we realized none of our special attacks work. We could only bite him. Primordius, you ain't doing shit, boy. You think you are, but you ain't. The only problem is if my Drexus dies, it's going to be way slower. His health was dropping, but it was at quite a slow pace. And we started losing a few of our Rexes. So douche is gone. And just for the sake of it, we knew we were going to win. This was just taking a long time. We got Atlas to come and help us out. Rex ready. Michael is gone. Okay, yeah, I probably need you now. I'm going to call in my last resort. The Four Horsemen. Let's go. This really sped stuff up. I had a lot of instant health potions, so it's not like the world boss is going to delete me anyway. The world boss is down to 65 million health. This is going to be in the bag. 8 million, 7, 4. Yes! Let's go! And with that, we successfully beat the world boss by day 100. Thank you guys for coming through. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Till next time, peace.